back to Sudbury, it's kind of special to be able to work with your brother. No one cares more about each other's careers than each of us, you know, and, and we want to see each other do well, and we're expecting more of each other. Nothing's ever good enough. I want to establish myself as a, as a great player for the Buffalo Sabres. And I'm thinking it's going to be a great year. I got really high expectations for our team and for myself. You know, I think this will be one of the probably the first years where you're really going to be able to see, and he's going to be able to see for himself what he's really truly capable of doing. Now you can see the maturation of him already and his mental preparedness for this season. Now he's gotten married, he's moving forward with his life and it's really fun to see because I know my mom's sitting up there very proud of him and, then, and the man he's become. I've always thought that I would be a big player for this franchise, for this organization and you know I want to stay in Buffalo for the rest of my career. So when people ask you where you are from, what do you tell them? Uh, from Sudbury, Ontario. I was born in Buffalo, I know that, but Sudbury, I came here when I was 12 years old and this is where all my friends are and family are is and both of my parents, parents grew up here and every time coming back to Sudbury it was a lot of fun. See this is the type of stuff you see in Sudbury, Ontario, look at that guy's backseat. Uh, uh huh, nice moose. Nick being the older brother, I think as a younger brother, you always want to try to beat your older brother. Uh, there's so many years where he was always good at things and you weren't just because of the age. From being four years younger than me, it kind of takes me off when I <laughs> see him doing better than me in a lot of things. So I think now with the competition that we have is, is healthy, it's sometimes clean. How many guys in the league get to really do this with their brothers? We feel so blessed and fortunate and uh, we want to make sure we cherish these moments. Go. Going into this season, the, the work I put in this summer and the way I felt you know, ending last season, it, it, uh, it's something that I know that right now I'm in my career, it's, right to, it's the right time to, to start going, to start uh, being that, that player that I envisioned myself all along and um, it's to help this team uh, make the playoffs and eventually win a Stanley Cup. I think he's finding himself as a player and I think he's arrived to a spot where he, uh, he knows what's expected of him now and he knows that he can bring it. where I kind of made my Ontario Hockey League career and Nick and I are coming back and, and, and seeing this arena and playing it and practicing in it too. So it gives a goosebumps and, and reminds you of the plays and, and the, the great games you had. And Where did your mom sit? She sat right behind the net over here. She, she was probably one of the worst persons to sit next to though because she was calm and cool but she would get nervous and my dad would you know criticize you on a, on a back checking player that you didn't have your man but then she would be like but that one move I saw that one move you made it was Hers is just always positive and always uh, thinking that you were the best player out there, so. It was hard for us because the loss of my mother and then it coincided with all of us kind of moving away and Marcus was kind of left a little bit alone to fend for himself. He was playing junior hockey here and we were all kind of a little older in our lives and Marcus was still a young kid and I think it took him a little bit longer to kind of come through that. So this is the hospice where before my mom passes is where kind of we had our last couple of weeks with her. Me and Nick would go work out, skate, and then we'd come right here and we'd spend about six or seven hours. And this place was home for us for probably a month or two. And it's kind of Jan's Flino Terrace here that they, they put in uh, my memory of my mom. So now we're seeing these chairs right next to the Rockets, it's cool just to sit down and think and kind of get some, uh, some, you know, remembering your mom and the way she was with you. and. Something that uh, deals definitely deals with uh, with coping of uh, you know the loss of her. His emotions are very in check with himself. Like he 
is able to express himself when he needs to, but for the most part, he's very reserved in how he feels. Even now with everything that they're doing with the Janice Felino Foundation to keep her legacy going and the woman that she was, it's really commendable. You know what, I think he's come out of it now as a, a better man for it because he's kind of internally processed everything and now he understands what he wants in life. And I know my mom's sitting up there very proud of him and, and, and the man he's become, as all of us are right now. It was a lot of maturity, self-growth and, and growing as a player and I'm really proud of kind of the years I've had and I feel that uh, the Buffalo Sabres organization is, is, is on the rise and um, is going to be a dominant team for years to come. Any coincidence those chairs are blue and gold? <laughs> I don't know. We all know who our favorite team is then. <laughs> Beyond Blue and Gold is presented by New Era, the official cap of the Buffalo Sabres.